option extend, tap again. You think you got it? Uh, Are there numbers going up? Yeah. Okay, you're recording. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, and eventually it'll dim a little bit. And don't stare at it the whole time. It's okay. only meant to be used momentarily. Okay. You can put your face wherever you want to the front of the board. Don't look at fellow students so that if I want to post this to YouTube, I can. Okay. I'll have to trim off all this junk at the beginning. Otherwise, it'll be the strangest disabled <laughs> okay. uh, And now everybody else should have their books out so that you can reference problem uh, 32. Uh, we're on page 50. So be on page 50, problem 32. And if you don't have a picture yet and you got stuck or got it wrong, you're going to see. In fact, I'm going to hold up my work here briefly just for you guys to see. This doesn't matter for the video. Okay. Uh, what did I start with right away once I realized it was going to be a tricky problem? A picture. Now, I'm going to do the problem fresh okay, and only glance at this maybe for notation uh, so I can double check and make sure I've got the stuff the way I did it earlier. Also, this problem will eventually only take you uh, about five minutes, maybe less than that, if you use ratios. Right now, it's going to take like 20, because this is our first problem where we're really using ratios. So I'm going to go really slow and detailed, uh, and a lot of other problem solving stuff here. I need someone to check in with. Is there somebody I can check in with just to slow me down? All right, so I'm going to check in with you. I'm just going to call you you, OK? Uh, not that it matters. Why don't you know last name? We're OK. Uh, so we got the cab driver, OK? And they're driving in a straight line, and they go two kilometers, and there's two parts to the trip. There's what they refer to as the acceleration phase and the deceleration phase. I hate the word deceleration, but it pops up from time to time. If you have an acceleration and deceleration, that just means they're in different directions. And deceleration usually means that the object is going to do what? Slow down. So I'm going to draw a picture up here. Oh, you should be aware that's very wide angle. So you don't like have to follow me the whole time. You can just look at the board, and it will just okay. kind of capture probably from about here all the way to over here where you're sitting right now. It's really wide angle. Uh, so I'm going to draw a picture, and we're going to have a car, okay? And then there's the phase where it is accelerating, according to them. And then there's the phase where it's decelerating. And I might not have these distances right, okay? Because we haven't gotten to the part where they tell you which one's bigger, the acceleration and deceleration. But does it make sense that we're picking somebody up in the cab? Excuse me. The cab is going to pick somebody up. They pick them up, and then they do what? Drop them off. Are you all right with the picture? Here at the beginning, I'm going to add lots of information to the picture. When you got a problem and you know it's tricky, you want to add, or you're stuck, one or the other, tricky or you got stuck, go back to the picture and put lots of information on the picture. Here we're starting out. The cab driver probably started at rest. Is that okay with everybody? So I'm going to put on here that I'll just call it V1 equals zero meters per second. I'm going to refer to this as V mid. Okay. I'm going to refer to this as V2. At the end, when they drop the person off, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. So when they drop the person off, what will V2 have to be? Zero, okay? So zero meters per second, unless the person is going to jump out of the cab, okay? And is the person going to jump out of the cab? No, okay? So we've got this going in a straight line, and since we have these two phases, this acceleration part and this deceleration part, okay? We're going to have this be, is this the cab problem? Do I have the right problem? Yeah. Okay. I said the wrong thing about picking somebody up, didn't I? Also the pick them up and then deliver them to somebody. Yes. So picks it up here. There's an acceleration phase. Slows down, comes to a stop, drops them off. Is that correct? I said they drop. I said they picked them up here. That is incorrect, okay? They got them here. So to pick them up, will they come to a stop? Yes. To drop them off, will they come to a stop? Yes. In the middle, they'll be moving. I'd be more all right with that. Elbows to ears, you're all right with that. Those of you that are following along with this, thank you to everybody. Okay, sorry, I missed one. Uh, and I'm going to call this A1 because we've got some acceleration here. And is there a different acceleration here? Yeah. Absolutely. So this will be A2. Remember, the motion equations only work if you have a what? Constant acceleration. Now, it's constant from here to here, but then does it change? Yes. Yeah. So a new, new motion equation, a new set of picking a motion equation, listing the five variables, it's a new part to a problem or a different variable, A1, A2. Are you okay with that? All right. Uh, one other thing I want to do here, since we have two parts of the trip, I'm going to call this displacement X1 and this displacement X2. And what is this whole thing, according to the problem? The two kilometers? All right. Algebraically, there's something very simple here we can already do. X1 plus X2 equals two kilometers. So that's that word problem kind of stuff. X1 plus X2 equals two kilometers. Starting out this problem, not sure if it's going to be useful yet, but is it, is it true? Yes. 
Yeah, so we might as well write it, it might come in handy. Now, there's something else in the problem they tell us. They tell us how A1 relates to A2. Now, can you read that for me, okay, that part where they tell us how it relates? But read it very slowly, I'm going to interrupt you. Uh, 40, 32, it's 32. 32. Oh, no, oh, here you go. Cab driver picks up a customer and delivers her two kilometers away on a straight route. Yep. The driver accelerates to the speed limit and, on reaching it, begins to decelerate at once. Okay. The magnitude of the deceleration. Okay, stop. The magnitude of the deceleration. Which one of these is the deceleration? A1 or A2? A2. 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 So the way it's written right now, I'm going to actually write what they're saying, and I'll change it a little bit in a minute. minute. The magnitude, so absolute value, of the deceleration, and then you said the word is, right? Is three times the magnitude of the acceleration. So is means equals three times the magnitude of the acceleration. However, do we really want those absolute values on there when we start doing our substitution? No. Which way, if we're speeding up here, okay, going to the right, faster and faster, faster, our acceleration here points to the right, which was a two point if we're slowing down, to the left. And I'm going to call right positive, so I need to throw what in here if I take away the absolute values? A negative. Doesn't matter where, I'm just going to put it here. So that A2 equals negative 3 A1. A1 is some positive number, so that then this will work out to an acceleration that is negative. Is that okay? Everyone, read those words. Look at this and see if you agree. Take a second, read those, that sentence that he just said, and make sure you're convinced of that. I don't know what me. Are you okay with this idea? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You'll be really loud because you're right by the mic. Oh boy. So all of a sudden people are like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? We good? I need to dispute. And now I want to just double check my work from earlier when I had a uh, clear mind with the first block or before first block. Yeah, that's what I did earlier too. So we're good. Okay, A2 equals negative 3, A1. Now that's all well and good. That's just all. Problem solving stuff. That's all word problems from your algebra days. Those are, there's nothing physics really there yet, other than the idea that we have two accelerations, right? We don't have one value for acceleration. Uh, at this point, we got to know what they're asking us to find. So it says, find the lengths of the acceleration and deceleration phases. So they're having us look for x1 and x2. This is where the ratio part comes in. If you have two distinct parts to a problem like this, where they link the stuff together, like we did right here with the A1 and the A2. Or you have two cases in a problem where they link the stuff together. They're like the time is a third of the time of the other problem uh, or other case. Or they have somewhere where they link the velocities. Like do we have a V mid here that's the final of one velocity and the initial of another? There's a link between part one and part two. That's when ratios come in handy because when you do the ratio, lots of stuff will cancel out and your life will get much, much easier when that happens. So what am I going to try to find a ratio of what I'm solving for, which is x1 over x2. This is what I'm going to try to figure out. But I need an equation for x1 and x2 beyond just this. Okay? I need something with the motion equations. Uh, I'm going to list the five variables. You don't always have to do this, but I'm going to list the five variables so that I can figure out what I want in my equations and what I don't. So I'm going to, do a, I'm going to get a general equation to apply to both x1 and x2. So we've got to figure out which one. So I'm going to have x minus x naught, v naught, v final, acceleration, and time. And when I'm doing this, the key thing is I want to either know what a variable is or be able to have a connection between part one and part two for that variable. Uh, also, some problems will just flat out say, find the ratio of, and then you don't have any choice. You have to find the ratio of whatever the number is. Well, do I want x's in my answers? Well, I've got to solve for x. Do I want x to be in my equation? Yes, without a doubt. I'm going to put a check by that. Initial velocity. Here's the initial velocity of part one of the trip. Do I know what it is? Okay. Here's initial velocity for part two of the trip. Is it related to part one? Yeah, because it's the final of the other one. So is it okay to have V initial? Do I know some V initials? Yes. V final. Similarly, do I know this V final for the second part of the trip? Does the V final of the first part of the trip relate to the start of the second part? Yes, they're tied together. So it's okay to have V final. Do I have a way to relate the accelerations? Yes. Yeah, so it's okay to have acceleration. Do I have anything up here, or was anything talked about in the problem about time? No. So time is my one thing that I don't know anything about. I don't know have any way to tie it from, from part one to part two, or eventually like a case one to a case two kind of thing. So time is my don't care, don't want it in my equation. 
So now I'm going to pick the motion equation based on that. If you didn't do all that, you could still pick a motion equation. But if time pops up in there, you, you'll get stuck. And then you'll need to pick another equation. You'll, you'll get stuck. Okay? Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and write v final squared equals v naught squared plus 2ax. And I'm just applying this as a general result. I'm just solving this equation right now for x. That's it. Okay? I'm not doing anything with the 1s and the 2s yet, just solving for x. And I'm going to skip some steps here. So v final squared minus v naught squared over 2a. Am I OK with that? Subtract v naught, divide by 2a. Just like in physics, if you need me to add algebra, speak up. I'll add the algebra in. Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Yes, yes, yes. OK. Uh, now I can apply this to x1 and x2. I'm going to give myself a little bit more room. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give myself a little bit more room to try to do it right here. So x1 equals, and let's figure out what x2 equals. Just a reminder, we're eventually going to turn this into a ratio. We're trying to answer the question, what is x1 over x2? x1 will equal, plugging in here, what's the v final for x1? This is problem, part one of the problem, v mid. Is that okay for your v final? Okay. So I'm going to have applying this equation to x1, v mid this squared. Right. You're right. Oh, right at x2. Thank you. There you go. V mid squared for my v final. And what's my v initial? Zero. Everybody okay with me just leaving this as v mid? Okay, v mid minus zero is v mid squared. So v mid squared minus zero. So v mid squared. Over 2a, which acceleration do I have here? A1. Because I'm in part one. Do you see how, how the picture helps to organize this and keep things straight on which one's one and two and all that? You want the picture, okay? Uh, A1. And now for x2, I'm going to apply this equation again to part two of the problem. And we have v final. What's v final for part two of the problem? It's zero. zero. So I'm going to have zero, which I'm not going to write, minus, so zero minus v initial, which is v mid. So minus v mid squared. Over which acceleration do we have now? A2. Questions before I go any further? We're not done, obviously. There's questions before I go any further. I don't think they're with me up to this point. You follow along. What I'm doing makes sense. I'm not sure if you can do it either or not. It makes sense. Where are we? Um, I don't understand how you can have the final velocity. The final velocity will go. This? Yeah. So V mid <coughs> minus zero over. Oh. Oh, hey, I left something off. Nobody two. caught it. I left off a two. Oh. That's because I know they're going to cancel in a minute. Sorry. Uh, are we OK now with where this came from? And this is 0 minus v mid squared over 2, a2. Is it clear now? Yeah. Everybody? Yes? OK. All right, so now I'm going to erase the minus 0 and the 0 right there. Is that OK still? OK. Uh, when you get more familiar with ratios, you'll see that there's still more we have to do here, but I want to make it simpler because it's starting to look a little bit messy and this is your first ratio. So I'm going to do x1 over x2. I'm going to go ahead and put, plug it into the ratio. I'm just going to draw the line right here. Is that okay with you? Just draw the line right there. Everybody else? Just leave the divide right there. And now a bunch of stuff cancels. What cancels? The twos. What else? The v mid squares. And we're left with what looks like a little bit of a mess here. Okay. I'm going to get rid of everybody. Okay, we get rid of our general result here. Everybody was good with we're good with that now. Just going to get rid of this little bit of extra that I did, just because I'm trying to write big. Let's see if this all shows up. Is this a test one? When I look at this later, in five years, this is the first one. Uh, maybe. Uh, I'm going to rewrite this. So we have one. I'm going to keep going. One over a one over negative one over a2. What happens now? The A2 will come up to the numerator. I'll take the A1 down. And the negative, does it really matter where I write the negative? I can move that negative wherever I want. It means the same thing. So I will have A2 over A1 and a negative. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? Questions from anybody? Now, this is not a number. When you get a ratio, you want like the number 5 here. So we're not done. So what do we have to substitute in for? A1 and A1 and or A2. If I hadn't written this, uh, oh, if I hadn't written this down, now I have to go back to the original problem and see, do I have a way to relate A1 to A2? Otherwise, you've got to pick again, pick a different equation, I think. But I, we already did this work. So now we can plug it in. So for A2, 
I'll plug in a negative 3a1. So we will have uh, negative 3a1 over negative, put the negative in there somewhere. What will happen to the negatives? One out with a positive. What will happen to the a1s? Cancel and we'll just get 3. So everything is canceled out now. Let's make that positive. And we've got 3. That's the ratio of x1 to x2. This problem didn't ask for the ratio for x1 over x2. It asked for what is x1 and x2. So we have one more step to do. Before I do the last step, questions on the ratio. Because this, what you're seeing right here, this is what you're going to be becoming a pro at by the end of the course. Those of you that got it right, did you do, you may have skipped a few more steps. You may have plugged A1 and A2 right away. Did anybody actually do this where they had B mid squareds or whatever you called it over A1 and A2? No? Kind of. You may have done it with substitution. As long as you didn't use anything with T, your method was valid because they didn't tell us anything about T. Otherwise, what you did was lucky, not correct. It was just got, you got lucky. Some people just look at it and they think that they, they get the ratio in their brain. They think it has to be three, but that's, you got to be careful with that because they're basing it just on the fact that A2 is three times A1. That'll backfire a lot. Do we have questions with squares? Yeah. Or square roots? Yes. So don't just think that because one times, one thing is three times the other, every other variable is. That will backfire more than half the time and you'll do awful. Okay, all the way back now. Uh, and I'll rewrite this a little bit. So this is what we found. x1 over x2 equals 3. I'm going to write that x1 equals 3x2. And at this point, it is a good idea to check to make sure it makes sense. Which one of these displacements is likely to be bigger? It's probably going to be the one with the uh, smaller acceleration. Which one with the smaller acceleration? Uh, A1. So do we have, is x1 bigger than x2? Yeah, so it's, it makes sense that that would be the case. Uh, you got to be a little careful with that. And now uh, we come back here and plug in. This part's easy. For x1, we have 3x2 plus x2 equals 2. 4x2, why am I writing all this? Equals 2. <laughs> x2 equals 0.5. And if x2 is 0.5, x1 has to be 1.5. So our final answers are x1 is 1.5, x2 is 0.5. That last part, okay? That last part, okay? Some problems will just ask straight for a ratio. Is that thing still recording? Yep. All right. Good. 1743 is what we're 17 right. minutes. There we go. You know how long it took. I think it took longer last block. I went even a little bit slower, uh, our first block. Uh, but I will never spend 20 minutes going over a ratio problem again of this level. I'll do this quicker. Uh, but you'll also, you've seen one now. I recommend in a couple days. Oh, you can stop recording. Okay. Uh, so uh, tap it. And then what's it say? Stop recording. Tap it again.